Five minutes after the last time you asked me. Relax, Ma. Stop worrying. Papa will be home soon. 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 Do you realize that this whole week we didn't sit down on the table like a family? This is Papa's busy season. You know that. All right. I know he's busy. But mark my words, your Papa has to learn to relax. There's a time and a place for everything. A man's business comes first, Ma, dear. Business comes first. Well, that's not my opinion. So what did Jake do, become a playboy? Did I say a playboy? I said he should learn to relax. So when he comes in, tell him, Jake, dear, relax. Oh, and he'll do it. All I have to say is, Jake, relax, and his pressure will go up and above and beyond. <laughs> you know Jake. Why doesn't Papa have a hobby or something? That'd relax him. A hobby? What kind of a hobby? Well, maybe something like Uncle David does. He fixes clocks for fun. This is a hobby? It used to be my business. There will your father find time for, for, for hobbies? Well, that's just the point. He'd have to make time. And instead of being at the factory so much, he'd be home doing something he likes. Then his mind would be concentrated on something else. It would give him a new outlook. Well, what kind of a hobby would do that for your papa? Well, maybe... Not a word. Good evening, Jake, dear. Hi, Pa. Hello, Papa, darling. Hello, Thank Jake. You. You're late now. What then, early? I don't watch the clock, Molly. So come. Come sit on the table. I saved a little snick snack for you. Come, dear. Come, darling. Rosalie, fetch it hither. Jake, you're home now. Change your face. Would that I could. Oh, uh, Sammy, in my pocket you'll find some papers. Give Gosh, them to me, please. Leave the papers. Where should I leave them? Who's going to worry about them if I don't? Can't you forget business for a little while? Thank you, Sammy. That's very easy to say, Molly. I only wish I could forget. And believe me, if I had a partner who wasn't so stubborn, I could forget. I could relax. Try, Jake. Try, Jake? I don't know. I read someplace. I don't know where in a book, I think. Now, don't start, Molly. I'm not starting. I'm only saying that I read someplace in a book about a man that divided his head into little rooms. One room was for his family. One room was for his business. One room was for... Beautiful. How many rooms did he have? More than one. Thank you, Rosalie. The trouble with you, Jake, is, darling, that you only have one compartment in your brain, and it's overcrowded. It's crowded with materials, with models, with your partner, Mendel. In the middle of the night, you woke me up to ask me if I thought they were going to wear brocades for next season. I asked in the middle of the night? You did. Excuse me. I will not. Well, can I do more than apologize? You can, and you will, and you must. Can I have some coffee, please? Rosalie, spill Papa. It's heating. Should I spill everybody? Please. You see? You see, David is doing something he enjoys. Something that gives him pleasure. A hobby, Jake. A hobby? Yes. That's what you need, and that's what everybody needs. All right. For instance, what should be my hobby? Well, Jake, there, there are many hobbies. There is, for instance... Uh, well, let... Go on. Well, uh, I do crossword puzzling. A nice waste of time. Why a waste of time? It helps me with my vocabulary. Very important. Why not? Well, since you're the spokesman for the family, a vocabulary is important for you, not me. All right, Jake, so there are other things. What? What? Uh, skating, skiing, dancing, horseback riding. Or maybe the more cultural pursuits, the arts, painting, music. All right. So why not painting? Anything that'll take your head off, Jake, anything. Wasn't it your second cousin on your Uncle Harry's side who was a painter, and now he's hanging in the museum? Jay, darling. Talent is a family resemblance. So his children suffered from malnutrition. They couldn't digest food painted on canvas. 
But, Jake, if it's a hobby, nobody will starve. Now, please, Molly, don't be childish. Look, look, David, look at all the colors. Hmm? Boynt, Sienna, Cadmanin, Barnum, yellow, light, and ultramarine blue. <laughs> Where did you buy all this, Molly? What do you mean, downtown in the art store? When you say hobby, it's got to be hobby. Listen, David, not for nothing are people writing books. Stop worrying, start living, relax and be happy. You have to relax, you must relax, you can't relax. All books and books are written for a purpose. Listen, not one word will proper come from, not one syllable, you hear? Gee, this is a real professional set, Ma. Sure. I hope I was in a good mood. <laughs> this will be something to see. Shh. Yes. Put away everything nicely and quickly. Oh, hide and seek today, a new hobby. What's this? Surprise! Surprise Jake. An easel. A palette. And paints, Jake. Brushes. For whom? For you. For what? The hobby. What kind of hobby? Who said anything about a hobby? Didn't we discuss last night? Discussion is conversation. It's not a decision. All right, Jake. You try it, Jake. Please, darling. Molly. Give the toy to Mrs. Peterson's baby. Rembrandt wasn't a baby. Then go with an adult, Pa. They were not in the dress business. Jake, darling. All I want you to do is just try it. But, but why painting? Because your cousin and your Uncle Harry's side was a painter. Maybe it runs in the family. <laughs> Look, honey. Here you hold it. Here's you the easel, hold. Pa. Huh? And a Try. canvas. See, and that's a canvas. Put it on the easel, yeah. Rosalind. And here's a brush. Come on, this paint's trying to take down. What kind of foolishness is this? It's Just nonsense. I Come on, Pa. What do I need a hobby for? Schmear a little bit, the end of the day. Now, just schmear uh, and throw. All right. Try. All right. <laughs> so what should I paint? Oh. Well, paint, um, paint a cactus. Sure. Yeah, cactus. I tried it. What you can do with that, Pa? Yeah. Now, it's only because my humor is pretty good tonight that I'm giving in to this nonsense. Oh. Uh, all right, Jake. Try. Uh, try. Uh. There. Love, beautiful. Beautiful. Didn't I tell you you'd be a different man if you took your head off? I'm a different man because for once my partner Mendel listened to me. So paint check. Just relax and paint check and forget Mendel. All right. Uh, could I have a cup of coffee, Molly, please? Why not? Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. A little quiet would not be amiss. Oh, the temperamental artist already. I'm learning. Well, don't disturb yourself. I'll take you to the kitchen. Don't disturb yourself. Hello? Hello, to whom am I? Oh, hello, Mrs. Mandel. Well, no, no, M Mr. Goldberg is, is busy and he cannot be disturbed. Well, tell Mr. Mendel whatever it is, it'll have to wait. But he's painting and he's relaxing with a bunch of grapes. Very well. Bye. Golly, maybe Jake won't to speak to Mr. Mendel. David, please. A man's home is his castle and he should not be disturbed. Come, watch and see what Jake is doing. Who was it? Nothing consequential that couldn't wait, Jake. Paint, hey, dear. Hello? Oh, yes, Mendel. Well, what do you mean I didn't want to talk to you? Well, who told you it could wait? Molly, did you? Just a minute, Mendel. Nobody told me you were on the phone. What are you getting so excited about? It... What fell through? But why? Well, who told you to... You see, what you don't do yourself, you... What? What painting? Now, listen, me... me... Hello? 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 Why did you tell Mrs. Mendel I wouldn't come Jake, to the phone? I... That was a decision for me to decide. Jake, I only called well, don't think. All of a sudden, everybody's so concerned about me. Do you know what's going on in the factory? I'm being ruined because of this nonsense. Here, take it away. Take away the whole thing. Take it out of my eyesight. I never want to see it again. Jake. And I go, huh? I go get it, huh? Mal, dear, if Jake won't paint, say so won't paint. If he wants to worry, so let that be his hobby. Only some way I could get him back to his painting. 
He was convalescing so beautifully from his business worries. You who, Molly? Oh, hello, Daisy. Oh, here's your kettle. Oh, Thank Molly, you. that stuffed cabbage was delicious. Yeah. Henry said I must be sure to get the recipe. Of course. Well, is something wrong? Well, I have a problem. Oh? See, Daisy, I would like Mr. Goldberg to take his head off once in a while. He was painting and he was doing nicely, but he stopped. Well, was he good at it? Oh, good or bad is beside the point. He was painting. Well, maybe he needs a little encouragement. Encouragement? You know, someone to tell him his pictures are good. <laughs> to me, he won't listen. To me, neither. No, 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 I don't mean that. I mean a compliment from somebody who knows about painting. Yeah. Molly, why don't you speak to Mr. Flederman? You know the man that runs the art store? Boy, Daisy, that's an idea. <laughs> You see, David, how a friend in need can be a friend of these. When they get finished, Mr. Slaterman will be here any minute. Mm. Where's my crossword? Come on, Ali. I hope you're doing the right thing. I am, David. I know I am. Huh? Uh, Jay, dear, do you have a pencil for my crossword hobby? Huh? Uh, please. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you have no idea what my crosswords do for me. Is there anything wrong with a man's business being his hobby? Not if his business is his pleasure. But if it's not his pleasure... Now, stop before you start. When you were picking hobbies, Molly, why didn't you pick Shakespeare? That would have suited your philosophical tendencies. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Don't mention that. Where's the bicarbonate? I'll get it. I'll get it. Whom are you expecting, Molly? Some fellow hobbyist? Good evening, oh, Mrs. Goldberg. Good evening, Mr. Flederman. What a surprise. Come in. Come in. Come in, Mr. Flederman. Oh, thank you. Come in. Excuse thank me, you. Jay, dear. I want you to meet Mr. Flederman. <laughs> this is my husband, Mr. Goldberg. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? This is Mr. Mr. Flederman from the art store. <laughs> I'll take your hat. Do sit down. Thank do, you do. very much. Thank you. Oh. Uh, this is my Uncle David. Uh, Romain. Uh, uh, sit down. Uh, well, uh, to what do we owe this... Uh, Unexpected visit? Oh, I just came to congratulate you, Mr. Goldberg. Me? For what? Oh, it's not very often that a painter sells his first picture. My what? So, you see, Jake, dear, I didn't have the heart to throw away your still life. So I took the picture down to Mr. Flederman. And he liked it so much, he asked permission <laughs> to hang it up in his store. Yes, and a customer, a collector of Paintings, saw the picture, and bought it. He liked it? Imagine! He gave me $25. $25? <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, oh, yes. $25, all yours. Oh, who could believe it? You must neglect such a talent. Talent? I'm talented? Oh, you, Mr. Goldberg, of course you are. Oh, this, that picture that has something, uh, uh, it's crude, yes, yes, it's crude, but, but uh, uh, you caught something there. You, uh, I don't know quite what it is. I can't put my finger on it. But I just put it down as I saw it. I never took a lesson in my life. Oh, you showed you caught the spirit of the apple. Oh, you caught the spirit of the apple. Oh, and that's more important than any correct draftsmanship. You see, I knew when I saw those apples. Me, they gave an appetite. <laughs> but a man my age. Oh, your age. Uh, uh, read the life of Gauguin. He was a man of 40 when he started to paint. Mm. Your age. I think I'm going to keep an eye on you, Mr. Goldberg. <laughs> thank you. Thank oh, you, Mr. No, Flederman. No, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. And and, and, and don't forget, every day, some work with a brush. <laughs> <laughs> good, good night. Good night, Emily. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> well, this is so sudden. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Flederman. <laughs> Thank right. you. Right. How was I? Huh? Wonderful. Wonderful performance. And here, Mr. Flederman, here's your $25 back. Thank you.
if I ever really amount to anything, I'll owe it all to Molly. Cher, chez la femme. Cher, cher. David, I'll start another picture. Who knows what this can lead to? What should I paint? Apples. Hmm. Well, I already did the fruit category. No, mm. me. Paint me. Well, people are too hard at the beginning. Let me see. Oh, where's that uh, small statue that used to stand on the piano? Oh, that one? It's in the closet under the bookshelves. That should make a beautiful composition, David. If you thought that my other picture was good, <laughs> wait till you see the one of the... Ah, here it is. What's that? David? My painting, David. Oh, Jake, Molly only wanted you to relax. And I believed it. That whole business with the art store. So Mr. Flaterman sold it, huh? Twenty-five dollars, huh? It's only because... Don't explain. Jake. Jake? Sponge cake? Should I slice you? Thank you. David, hmm? David, just one thing will you promise me? Well, what should I promise you? That you won't tell Molly what I saw and what I know. I should promise? Once and for all, she has to be cured, David. If Molly wants a husband with a hobby, she shall have it. If she can play games, <laughs> so can I. And when I get finished, she'll never want to look a hobby in the face again, or my name is Jacob Mudd. <laughs> Dinner is standing. Please, Molly, these interruptions are very disturbing. I don't live to eat. I eat to live. And I'm not hungry. No? No. No, no. David? Hmm? Did you know that Jake didn't even go to the factory today? He didn't? Mendel called me and told me. Where did he go? To the park, painting. He didn't even give me my weekly envelope. You need money, Molly? Until I can speak financially to Jake. That's how all artists are, Ma. Money is the most unimportant thing in their lives. I know. Your father told me already. Sure, Rousseau gave violin lessons to children. Gauguin borrowed from his stock exchange friends. Surat was supported by his mother and Cezanne by his father. How do you know so much? Well, if we're going to have an artist in the family, you've got to know something about artists. Shh, silence, silence, please. Give me a chance to think. Shh. Jake, maybe you'd remove the smock and the beret and sit down and eat. Hey, Molly, do we have any eggs? You had eggs for breakfast. Not to eat, Molly. I need the whites of eggs to glaze my canvas. Pa, why don't you sit down and eat? The pot roast is delicious. Food, food, food. That's all you think about. Oh, my poor bourgeois family, how I've neglected your education. What do you mean? Let Papa eat. How do you set a table, Molly? Well, what's wrong with the way the table is set? I set the table, Pa. Then you have lots to learn. I cannot and I will not sit down at a table with color combinations that disturb me. Remove those flowers. They don't harmonize with the pot roast. But Pa... Rosalie, remove the flowers. Your father, my dear daughter, has found himself slightly late in life. Jake, maybe you should get the opinion of more than one authority on your talent. Don't be naive, Molly. A true artist needs no confirmation of his talent. If the whole world said no, I would still go on. From now on, Molly, I must shut my eyes to everything in my personal life. Rosie, hold it. David, take a potato. Molly, take a potato. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'll call it the potato eaters. Pa, Van Gogh already did the potato eaters. These are peeled potatoes. Jay, can I talk to you privately, please? I don't think I have time, Molly. My class starts at 7.15. Your class? My life class. I'm working on live models now. Why anybody should be a dressmaker when he can be a painter? Jake, Jake, I want to talk to you. 
I know, Molly. I know what you're going to say. Let me say it no, first. Jack, let me be the first to talk. When you mentioned my cousin Harry, you were right, Molly. It was all there, buried inside of me. It's my chromosomes. Jay, darling, couldn't you be a painter part-time? No. No, a thousand times no. All or nothing, Molly. Immortality is not purchased on bargain counters. Uh, oh, excuse me, Molly. My mood must be calm and receptive for the class tonight. My life class. Live models. I may be home late. Very late. You can't sleep not neither, huh, David? I just got up for a glass of water. Twelve o'clock and Jake is not home yet. Is he a Cinderella? So if it's twelve o'clock, will he turn into a pumpkin? One little compliment and look what it does to a man. Why should you be surprised, Molly? You wanted it. That's how you planned it. Isn't Papa home yet? Not yet. It's after 12. No, is Papa a pumpkin that will turn into Cinderella? Good night, darling. Go. And don't worry. Good night, Ma. Good night, Uncle David. Good night. David. Hmm? David advised me. Sometimes I can think and sometimes I'm null and void. Don't be null and don't be void, Molly. That'll be Jay calling me. At 12 o'clock he calls me a bohemian hour. A few words you'll hear from me. Hello? Oh, yes, Daisy. Well, did my light disturb you, by chance? Yeah. Well, your Henry's not home, not neither? So, well, my Jake went to a North class, also not home. What? What do you mean, that together? You... You must be mistaken, Daisy. A what? A poker game? Good night. Oh, all right, Daisy. Thank you very much. Yes, good night. David, look at me. Directly in my eyes, look at me. David, not from yesterday do I know you. David, you knew where Jake went tonight? I better go to bed. Not at all. Not one step until I hear every word. No? Molly. Yeah? Why didn't you tell me that you hid a picture in the closet? What? You mean Jake's picture? He saw it. You mean... So where was I when he saw it? In the kitchen. Oh, I... I'm beginning to dawn, Dave. Wonderful. Marvelous. Well, well, David, if Jake can paint like Gauguin, I can act like Sarah Bernhardt. No. Not at all. Sit. Sit. You want to see acting like you never saw acting? Sit. Sit. Oh, you're awake. It's a late hour for you. Ah, we had a wonderful session tonight. I would feel foolish to repeat all the compliments I got for this. You know, painting apples and pears and grapes is one thing. But when it comes to the human anatomy, everything else is elementary. Purely elementary. Here, yeah, just look at my canvas. Isn't she beautiful? Every stroke has the rhythm of nature. Did you ever see such lines? Such exquisiteness. I never knew there was such beauty in the world. Ah, my eyes are open. My eyes are also open, Jake. Tell me nothing roundabout language, but tell me plain and I'll do likewise. It seems like we are at the crossing of the roads and the parting of the ways, Jake. And now that you are what you are, and my world is no longer your world, then there's only one thing left for me to do. When a man gets beyond and goes beyond, there's only one thing to do. <laughs> Let him go. I'll take the children and I'll go, Jake. Molly. Yes. Yes, Jake. She's exquisite. She's rhythmical. You never saw such lines, huh? How would you like some more lines? Molly! Molly, Molly you're telling my picture, Molly. What are you doing? Molly, Molly, stop! You're telling my picture. She 
It was only acting, Jack. She said if you can be Gauguin, she can be Sarah Bernard. <laughs> Yeah, but look what she did to the picture. It wasn't mine. Who's then? The art stores. I borrowed it. It was marked fifty dollars. Well, isn't it worth fifty dollars to get rid of your hobbies? <laughs> more than that, baby. Much more. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and if it's inconvenient, say no, and I'll tell her yes or no. If you'll unravel that sentence, maybe I'll be able to answer it. Mrs. Van Ness, the yellow house with the black shutters, the lady that lives up the street, she wants to know if her daughter can come over to your place and get a dress wholesale for her wedding. Well, why not? Oh, thank you. So why don't you eat, Rosalie? I'm thinking. What are you thinking? I'm thinking if I ever wanted a doctor of philosophy degree like Mrs. Van Ness' daughter, I'd be a grandmother before I got it. Oh, well, she was a major all her life. You mean she majored, Ma. And what did she major? Psychology. That's what your mother should have majored in. Why? Because she loved people. As a psychology student, Molly, you would have been a professor. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The matter is wrong to love people. Did I say it was wrong? Don't you like to mix? Don't you like to ask questions? Don't you like to know everybody's innermost secrets, even their dreams? Dreams? Why, certainly, dreams are very significant, mm -hmm. very. That's right, Ma. Mm -hmm. I dream every night, so what? Mm, if life was only a little bit longer, there's so much a person should know. You know enough. I, I don't think, dear. You're happy? Very. But maybe I'd be happier if I knew a little bit about uh, psychology, for instance. Maybe you'd be happier, but I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Come, Rosalie, you'll be late. Goodbye, Molly, darling. Goodbye, David. And don't worry about what you don't know. All right. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Goodbye my darling. Darling. All right, sweetheart. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Oh, excuse me. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I got a letter from the parents and teachers. They want me to belong to the committee. See? That's nice. Listen, who has time for such things? How many hours are there in a day, David, darling? With my washing and my ironing and my cooking and my cleaning? Who has time? After all, I'm not a social butterfly. I'm a housewife. I'll have to recline the invitation. Oh, hello, Mrs. Goldberg. Oh, hello, Mrs. Van Ness. Good morning, Uncle David. Good morning, Mrs. Bennett. I was just going to call you. You were? Yeah, Mr. Goldberg says your daughter can come down for the dress anytime she wants. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> How is your daughter? Oh, fine. She graduated cum laude. Oh, my. All in psychology? Mm, yes, Lucy's going to devote her life to psychology. Oh, my. My family says that dreams are a very big part of psychology. Is that so? Yes, indeed. 
There isn't a dream anyone dreams in this town that Lucy and I can't figure out like a jigsaw puzzle. Is that so? I dream every night. Oh, try to remember them. You just write them down and I'll interpret them for you. Oh, dreams are so important. Of course. And Shakespeare says we are the stuff that dreams are made of. In Shakespeare? I dreamt last night. What was that dream I dreamt last night? Oh, I dreamt I was walking on top of the world. And, and you know, the globe like in school. And the world was revolving, and I was walking with a broom and a dust rag and a mop. And the world was revolving and revolving. The faster it was revolving, the faster I was wiping. Can't you see it? What? You are frustrated, Mrs. Goldberg. Absolutely frustrated. That's good. Of course not. You are frustrated because there is so much going on in the world and you want to be a part of it. But you are imprisoned. Mm -hmm. The dust cloth and the mop are the symbols of your imprisonment. You are sublimating your own personality. Oh, you're too intelligent to waste yourself, Mrs. Goldberg. Well, what do you mean? Oh, get out into the world. You weren't meant to be a housefrau. But I love it. Oh, you think you love it, but you're just wasting your life. How can you love washing and cooking and cleaning? Oh, you hoo you hoo ladies. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be right with you. Good. Now, if you have any other problem, you just tell me. I've got to go over and see Mrs. Carey. She has a few problems of her own. Most of the women of our neighborhood need therapy. They don't know how unhappy they are. Well, I only hope I can do something for them and for you before it's too late. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Bye. David. Mm. David, looking at me, would you say that I was a happy woman? Well, absolutely. David, you know something? I'm only sublimating. You are? <laughs> what does it mean? It means all is not gold that glitters. Oh. David, maybe I should join the parents and the teachers committee. Why not? After all, how long can I just wash and iron, cook and clean? Maybe I'm not a housefrau. <laughs> Rosalie, my darling, shall I boil you or fry you? No eggs for me, Uncle David, thank you. Me, you can scramble. I did it already. Oh? What time did Mama get home last night? Thank you, David. Am I watch? It was one o'clock? Mm -hmm. Parents and teachers executive meeting. Morning. morning. Why did somebody morning. wake me? Who had the heart to wake you? You come in one o'clock in the morning? Well, my executive meeting, Jake. And then we had discussions after, so we went in to have some refreshments. Let me fix breakfast, David. I'm dear. fixing. Oh, thank you. Mm. Uh, Jake, dear. If, if you don't mind, and if I have your approval, and with your approval, could Ruby the maid come to me twice a week instead of once a week? Why not? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, David, dear. Mm. And Rosalie, Jake, uh, David, if I'm not present here supper time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, will that be all right? Why? Well, my executive meeting. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. Uh, can I have a pencil, please? At least I forget. At least you forget what? My dream. Oh, what was your dream? Well, you wouldn't understand, Jake, dear. Mrs. Van Ness says... Oh, Mrs. Van I... Ness. Yes, Mrs. Van Ness says... I first... know, I know. Amuse yourself, Molly, but don't go too far. Oh, say, darling, a new world is opening up for me. Now, hold on to the old one. I like it very much. Come on, Papa, darling, I'm going to be late. Bye, Coming. Ma. Go goodbye, darling, goodbye. Coming. Oh, Jake, darling, I'm only trying to fulfill myself. That's very nice. <laughs> Goodbye, Molly, darling. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, David. Bye, Jake. Bye-bye. Uh, well, we'll you have breakfast. <laughs> Morning, Mrs. Van Ness. Yoo-hoo! Mrs. Goldberg! Any dreams this morning? Plenty. You want to hear? Of course! Come sit down. But last night, 
Last night I dreamt that I was playing the piano at a concert. And, 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 and the piano wouldn't play, no matter how I tried, the piano wouldn't play. Not a note, not a sound. Very significant. It is. And the people were applauding. And the people were applauding. And no matter what, the piano wouldn't play. Not at all. Clear as water. Yes? Mal, dear. Yes, David? Should I start to vacuum now? Yeah, yeah, please. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Well? well you are bursting with a desire to express yourself. But you're in prison. Prison? Oh. You have potentials in you that are seeking an outlet. And if you continue to suppress yourself, you are going to be a very sick woman. You mark my words. So what should I do? Express yourself. Sands. Play the piano. Get rid of your inhibitions. Well, what should I do with them? Well, uh, bury them. Like you bury the dead. You! Mrs. Renes! Oh, you! I'll be right over. Oh, I'm sorry I can't give you any more time this morning, Mrs. Goldberg, but I've got to go over to Mrs. Peterson. She is in a horrible condition. It isn't physical with her. It's basic. Basic? Well, I remember, keep on jotting down those dreams. I really... <laughs> More dreams? Oh, yes. So exciting. Come in. <laughs> so what's uh, with your dreams? David? Hmm? I'm a potential. You are? And I should be expressed. To where? To where? To singing, to playing, to acting. Anything, David. But I must do something with myself. Why? Because of my emotions, David. Oh. David. Mm. You always could keep a secret, would you? Mm, why not? David. Mm? My first potential will be the piano. So that's the secret? And Let me hear it again. Watch my fingers. Hmm. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and... Sorry, Yoo -hoo. mistake. Oh, Molly! Give me Daisy. Helping you? I think so. I can't keep my mind on the piano. Mrs. Vanessa said I should try hats, so I bought three. I never realized what was wrong with me until she made me conscious of my unconscious. My trouble is inferiority. That's so. Well, mine is sublimation. I'm not fulfilling my potential. Well, I love that hat. I have neurotic inhibitions, I have persistent neuroses, and I'm a compulsive thinker. I won't rest until I overcome myself. Isn't it amazing how a person never knows how unhappy she really is? Hello, Mrs. Carey. Oh, hello, Mrs. Vanessa. Look. Oh, lovely. <laughs> hello, Mrs. Goldberg. Hello. How's the piano coming? Well, I'm still scaling, but I hope to be up to music soon. Oh, good. I'll be able to see you in a few minutes. Any more dreams? Come, come and sit down and I'll tell you. Come. Don't forget, Molly, your leg is still in the oven. Then turn me over. 
And David, dear, I made some nice fresh coffee. Spill Mrs. Van Esten me in a cup, please. In a jiffy. Thank you. I think your uncle likes me. Oh, my uncle likes everybody. I could say something about that also. Oh, but tell me, what was your dream? Well, I dreamt I was vacuum cleaning the carpet. And the vacuum cleaner vacuumed up Sammy, Rosie, and my husband, Mr. Goldberg. What do you mean, vacuumed up? Well, it drew them into the vacuum bag. And they were calling to me, let me out, let me out, and I didn't. What did you do? Well, I took the vacuum cleaner and I put it in the closet and I locked the door. You locked the door? Oh, I can't believe it. Excuse me. Thank you. Well, excuse me. Thank you. So tell me. That's it. That reveals everything. Now we have the cause. Yeah. The basic fundamental cause. Yeah. Do you know that you hate your husband? Oh, please. And that your children are a frustrating oh, obstacle please. to you? Well, two and two make four, Mrs. Goldberg. Listen, that interpretation is just a little bit too much. Well, of course, you're not aware of it consciously. But there is even a death wish. Oh, please, Mrs. Van. Oh, there, 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 there. Oh, dear. Oh, we'll discuss this when you're a little less emotional about it. <laughs> Mrs. Van don't forget me. Coming. She's becoming positively obsessed with hats. Imagine. <laughs> David! David, where are you? The meat is soft and the potatoes are boiling. David. Hmm? David, is it possible to hate somebody that you love? Again, the unconscious. Subconscious, David. So? David, I am what I dream. And my dreams are me. So let me hear. David, a mother that can dream about a vacuum cleaner that sucked in her children and her husband. So? Don't you see the symbols? Symbols? David, I'm not who I seem to be. Then who are you? Dr. Jacob and Mrs. Hyde. Molly, put your head on the table if you're setting. Stop thinking of nonsense. I'm late, but I had to go to Glee Club practice. Oh, did Sammy come home yet? Yeah, he went to the store. Rosalind, come here. Come here to Mama. Why, Ma? I didn't see you a whole day. Not even a kiss, not. What's the matter, Ma? Well, what should be the matter? Look how your hair looks, Rosalind, darling. Look at yourself. <laughs> Ow! Mom, what do you want to do? Take my head off? What did you say? Gee, you pull so hard. What did you say? The exact words. What did you say? Do you want to take my head off? Jay? Oh, am I hungry. Hello, David. Hello, Jay. Molly, dear. Is supper ready? What are we having? Goulash. Goulash? Now, you know I don't like goulash. You know what it does to me. What do you want to do, poison me? <gasps> what did I say? I don't, I don't like the word poison. All right, so I'll eat the goulash. And if I die, it'll be your fault. Uh, Rosalie. Yes, Pa? Bring down the bicarbonate. Unless you forgot to buy it again. I did. A whole week I'm asking for bicarbonate. Well, if we're going to eat, let's eat. Uh, David, mm. uh, you give the children and Jake supper. I, I want to turn myself over in the air. Uh, wait, Molly, I'll go with you. No, no, Jake, I, I have to go alone. What do you mean you have to go alone? Jake, please, I have to think and I don't need an accompaniment, please. I have to communicate with myself. Molly, I'm going with you. I don't like the way you look. Jake, if you go, I stay. I'm a woman, I'm mature. I have to overcome my infantilism. I'll be right back. Molly, I... Hmm. What is this? Dreams? What do you mean, dreams? Oh, 
Molly dreamed that she was vacuuming. And the vacuum cleaner picked up you and Sammy and Rosie. So? So, so she thinks it has a meaning. And the meaning is that she hates you and the children. Did you ever? No, I never. Never. Hello, Pa. Oh, hello, Sammy. Hello, Sammy. Well, how did things go at college this week, Fine. Sammy? Fine. Good. Listen, Pa, I just saw Mama going into Mrs. Van Ness' house. Somebody ought to talk to Mrs. Van Ness. What she doesn't know about psychology and dreams would fill a library, and she's been filling Mama's head with a lot of nonsense. You know, there ought to be a law against people talking about things they don't know anything about. Just because her daughter majored in psychology, she thinks she's an authority on the subject. Mm, that Mrs. Van Ness is making the whole neighborhood unconscious. And somebody ought to do something about it. One minute. Excuse me. One second. Hello, Henry. Oh, hello, Uncle David. Is uh, Jake at home? Yes, yeah, sure. Oh, hello, Jake. Hello, Henry. I want to talk to you. We got to do something about these here women folks of ours. That you don't have to tell me. Can you imagine? Daisy just told me I hate her. I don't know what to do. If I stumble over a chair, it means I'm kicking Daisy. And she misinterprets everything I say. What's worse, she's doing nothing but buying hats lately. Just who does this Van Ness female think she is? I wouldn't care if she was a graduate psychologist. But what are qualifications as an interpreter of dreams? Her daughter's a major. I wouldn't care if she was a general. David, David, if I had an appendix that had to be removed by surgery, would I call you in because your son is a surgeon? Of course not. So, by what right and by what authority does she dare pass out interpretations and symbols? Look, Jake, I was a watchmaker, and I would never take a watch apart unless I was positive that I could put it together again. Well, I'm going over there and tell Mrs. Van Ness what's on my chest. I would. Well, should I let an intelligent person like Molly be bamboozled by an amateur? He's right. Wrong he isn't, Henry. But, Jake, there are more than one ways of having a cat. Any ideas, David? Well, I'm thinking. You, Henry? Well, I'm thinking, too. Mm, let's think all together. The three heads are better than one. <laughs> Are you sure that the subconscious is so unconscious? Absolutely. Mrs. Van Ness, I can't believe that dreams are so significantly significant. Oh, excuse me, please. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mrs. Van Ness. Hello, Mr. Goldberg. I wonder if I could talk to you for a minute. Why, of course. Come in. Your wife is here. She is? Yes. Come right in. Jay? Molly, what are you doing here? I thought you went for a walk. I was just visiting, and you, vice versa. Uh, Mr. Goldberg wants to talk with me. Well, if it's something personal... Oh, no, 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 no. Sit down, Molly. I have no secrets from you. It's a dream I had that's been troubling me. Well, I'm sure it's nothing, but I would appreciate a spot analysis. Oh, just sit down. Perhaps I can help you. Thank you. Well... You see, I... Oh, it's foolish. Foolish. Maybe I shouldn't bother you. Why, it was so fantastic, it couldn't possibly have any meaning. Tell her, Jake. No matter how fantastic, Mrs. Van Ness will make it simple. <laughs> what is it, Mr. Goldberg? Well... I dreamt that I was in a prison, chained hand and foot. Yes? And suddenly I had the strength to break out. Go on. Well, the next thing I remember, I have my hands around my wife's throat, and I'm choking and choking. Me, you choke. Please don't interrupt, Mrs. Goldberg. Goldberg. Please. Go on. Well, the rest is unimportant. Nothing is unimportant. Well, after she was dead, I remember I'm calling out a girl's name. Martha. Martha, I'm coming to you. Martha, your bookkeeper. I guess so. And then? And then I woke up. What does it mean, Mrs. Van Nest? I'd rather not say at the moment. Now, please, Mrs. Van Nest, I must know. Uh, Mr. Goldberg, I, I just don't know how to say this. Well, you'll find a way. Well, if you must know, I believe you have suppressed criminal tendency. 
definitely hysteria, conversion, arrested growth and regression of stimuli. Oh, please, Mr. Van Ness, you're going too far. Face it, Mrs. Goldberg. He has a deep-seated wish to get rid of you so that he can marry this Martha, his bookkeeper. Obviously a young and beautiful woman. Martha is 58 and a grandmother twice over. Grandmother? Twice? But he was calling out to her. I, I don't understand. I do. Goodbye, Mrs. Van Esten. Thank you for everything. It was very helpful talking to you, Mrs. Van Ness. And in the future, I would suggest that you keep out of other people's dreams. Goodbye. <laughs> and then, then she said, I have criminal tendencies. <laughs> Since when did you start to dream so heavy? Since you started to dream heavy. It's catching. <laughs> oh, uh, Molly. Molly, maybe you can help me out with another dream I had. Yeah? What was it? Well, I dreamt that I was vacuum cleaning the rugs, and I vacuumed you and Sammy and Rosie. Uh, what do you think it means, Molly? It means that we should always be together very close. Yes, go on. And it means that you love me and I love you. You sure? I'm sure. And it also means that I need a new vacuum cleaner. <laughs>